<laughs> Side easy. What's up, Reefer Revolutionaries? It's 420 in California. This is Reefer Revolution Live. But I think in terms of marijuana, I think, and legalization, I think that should be a state issue, state by state. I think it's up to the states, yeah. I'm a states person. I think it should be up to the states, absolutely. You know, I know people that are very, very sick, and for whatever reason, the marijuana really helps them. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Terrorists keep terrorizing. Well, Reefer Revolutionaries, I know some good people who smoke marijuana and use it in other forms. And for some reason, that marijuana helps them. And we're going to hang out with one of our heroes today, folks. Spread the word. Joining us today is Alexis Bortel, live in, in chat, answering your questions, talking about... Super Bowl hypocrisy, <laughs> patient rights, and liberty. This is Reefer Revolution Live. I'm There's all in. Too. This is the time to go all in on cannabis. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Now the good people over at We TV do the Cannabis Media Network. Austin would have dozens to hundreds of seizures every single day. None of the prescriptions would work. One pill almost killed our son. I've had three back surgeries and I was on opioids for 15 years. It was a very dark, very depressive time in my life. After my injury, I felt like I couldn't live with the pain, but I couldn't live with this treatment long-term. It was unbearable. I don't have to live like that anymore. Medical cannabis saved Austin's life. Cannabis has given me my life back. There are families in other states having to watch their children die. I want to see my brothers and sisters who sacrificed so much for this country have access to the safest treatment possible. This really is an injustice. It's not just unfair. It's cruel. My mic was I'm off. On. Yours too? <laughs> yeah, mine was off too. Yay! So excited. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'll have to do that again. Hang on, Alexis. Okay. What's up, everybody? I'm Dave Conan. This is indeed Reefer Revolution Live. My microphone was muted, as was Jella's, because we're so excited. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the sound. Mason's like, sound, sound. Thank you, Mason. I'm yelling at Jella for turning on her mic, and, and our mics weren't on for you guys. Welcome, everybody. Uh, very, We are very excited. It is a super day. And we're not even talking about that nonsense uh, on that other on those other mainstream channels I've been talking. Thing. Some sportsy thing going on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we are going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Reefer Revolution Live. We are excited. Very special super day. We're going to be hanging out with one of our heroes mm. uh, in the cannabis space in the medical cannabis world because you know these mainstream folks don't seem to think that medical cannabis is important and that. America really is going to embrace tax and regulate like alcohol, and then medical cannabis is going to go by the wayside. I find that very curious. And we're going to talk about that in lots of other subjects, including the CBS and Super Bowl hypocrisy. We saw the ad at the top of the show uh, from Acreage Holdings, along with uh, Mr. Boehner saying he's all in on cannabis. That, of course, is the company he is associated with. Uh, and the uh, the CBS, of course, banned that ad, didn't ban it, but they just didn't take that ad. Uh, and there was some uh, discussion of that in the cannabis media this week, as well as the mainstream media. 
and we're going to talk about the headlines before we get into our interview. So folks, Alexis Bortel is in the, our Zoom chat waiting to jump in. So spread the word about the show, share this uh, stream. We're going to be hanging out with Alexis, talking about the news and uh, talking about liberty. We're going to talk about liberty. If you didn't catch her testimony before the uh, Colorado State Senate, Health and Human Services Committee, I think, or something to that effect, uh, about uh, Colorado is looking to add medical marijuana as an alternative to opiates, as is being done in many, many states around the country, including Illinois this week. You'll see in the in the uh, afterburn. Uh, but uh, this is happening all around. Um, opiates is already proven anecdotally to be the answer or one of the answers, one of the tools, uh, medical marijuana for opiates. So that's good news. And Alexis testified before the, the council, uh, not only to support the bill, because we know Alexis is not necessarily doesn't support every bill that comes through. She supports this bill and we'll find out why, uh, but also to discuss the list itself and that it's ridiculous to have a qualifying conditions list. Uh, in any state that has medical cannabis, this is between the doctors and the patients. That's it. End of story. And that's really what her broader message were to lawmakers as they look at this at this bill. Howdy from Texas. We have two days. Tom Sawyer from wow, Texas, where wow. Alexis is a refugee from. Awesome. Blaster Masters in the house. We got CJ Apo jumping in. Welcome, CJ. Uh, we saw him over that at, at the Emerald Cup. That was great. Arturo G over on Periscope. Awesome. Folks, we are multi-streaming. We're multi-streaming on, of course, we're on YouTube. We're on Twitch. We're on Periscope. We are on DLive. Folks jumping in over on DLive. Welcome, cool. everybody. Uh, so welcome to the show. This is, of course, <laughs> Reefer Revolution. Let's uh, talk just real briefly about some of the headlines uh, this week, and then we'll get into our, we'll bring Alexis in because I know everybody wants to, wants to talk to Alexis. She's going to be answering your questions. So yeah. if you have some questions for Alexis Bortel, uh, drop them in the chat. Um, and, uh, uh, ooh, louder for those in the back agreed. Oh, okay. Uh, making sure our sound's okay because I am messing right. with the sound a little bit. Thank you very much, uh, Cannabis Sativa. Tanya Forbes agreed. says the sound is still echoing on her end. Does anybody else have echoing? Echoing, That's really? That's the question. Hmm. Um, well, I'm hoping it's, it's okay now. Let me listen. You know All what? Right, I'm keep gonna, going. Keep going. We're going to keep going. And keep when we, going. before we switch over, I'll, uh, I'll make sure the audio is going out uh -huh. well. Uh, so folks, the headlines I'm talking about, of course, over at DC420LA.com. Uh, you can sign up for the Cannabis Chronicle. I send out every Saturday at 420 or they're close to it anyway. Uh, and there's the headlines that I find, uh, important. Chella and I find important during the week and that we talk about on the show. And we're going to talk about a lot of them today with Alexis, uh, including this uh, this first one that caught Alexis's eye. Oh, look, wait, there will be there will be cannabis advertising at the Super Bowl, just not on TV. They're just going to do it all over the digital screens at the stadium and on people's phones uh, for a coffee company, a coffee CBD, a product, to buy. a product to buy CBD coffee at the stadium. So for profit. Uh, if you can put it in coffee and, uh, sell it, to, for profit, they're gonna, they're okay with it. Uh, but, uh, CBS not happy, uh, with the Super Bowl ad. And there's a couple of stories that we're going to talk about that today. Uh, also, oh, in the uh, top of the news this week, the World Health Organization seems to have come to their senses. They're not going to totally deschedule it, but they don't think it should be where it has been for the last decade or so. They were wrong. So they're recommending reclassifying. We've been waiting for this news, and they indeed have decided that it should be reclassified. So that's good news. Because we put in our input recently. We did. We did put our input. We were active here, at least at Reefer Revolution, uh, talking to the to the WHO. And, you guys uh, might remember. As you may recall. Mm -hmm. um, another big story this week that was on Cello's radar, and uh, because it's close to home for us, uh, is locally here in Orange County. Patients' rights are an issue here uh, with medical co marijuana collectives have been disbanded in the state of California. There's no nonprofit collectives anymore. Uh, it's for profit only uh, or, you you know, you got to pay your taxes. You can get medical, but you got to pay your taxes if you don't get the card, which is a big rigmarole. But with medical metal marijuana collectives disbanded, patients feel further left behind in the new legal marijuana market. Uh -huh. And uh, Laguna Woods is a senior cannabis club down there in that community. That's having trouble getting their meds. This guy has been running his club for 10 years, since 2009. He's 73 years old, and um, he serves his whole community. And uh, pot shops 
pot shops, excuse me, dispensaries <laughs> are not allowed in Laguna Woods. So all of his um, club members have no place to go. Yeah. Um, More illegal now that it's legal. And they're all older people who are using it truly medicinally um, for depression, for arthritis, for pain, for all kinds of things. We all know, if you follow the show, that cannabis helps dementia. Mm -hmm. So they're using it for that, too. So it's unfortunate that they're not able to get their meds anymore. And I think that it's sort of unconscionable that that's what happened with Prop 64. And they even have a real doctor down there, a real cannabis uh, me Israeli yeah. doctor, a clinic that uh, works with people with cannabis down there, titrating them off of their opioids and stuff yeah. with the senior community. So Mia Medic is a clinic in Laguna Woods, and they see cannabis patients all the time and tell you exactly how to get on to cannabis medicine without getting dizzy, and that is a concern for that patient group. So... Um, yeah, uh, it's unfortunate that they aren't allowed to um, access their medicine in a convenient way. Most of them don't drive. We'll see what happens. Indeed. Uh, so uh, continuing on through the news, a story that we've been looking at uh, sort of over the weeks following it is the confusion between hemp and cannabis, or the cousin marijuana. It's all cannabis. Uh, the... If you if you remember this story, a large uh, shipment of industrial hemp was seized, uh, and um, they said, "No, nah, we need to test this to make sure it's not the bad stuff." Then the government shut down, and the test finally came back, and it said, "Oh yeah, this is not this is industrial hemp." And then the DA said, "No, wait, it all has to be tested. Every uh... single every single part of this shipment has to be tested." To see if it's good good cannabis or bad cannabis. Oh my god! So the firm is suing them, and we've got some video in the yes. uh, in the afterburn that talks about it uh, locally. Uh, Michael Moore thinks the post office should deliver two joints to every American on Fridays. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. If he was running for president, that would be his platform. Wow, I, I might have to vote for him. I might have to vote for him for that too. <laughs> uh, but definitely. I say that's a great idea. That's Daily great Dope Show idea. in the house. Welcome. Yes. DD, you've got the link if you want to jump in anytime, buddy. Um, so uh, that's in the news. And then the other real big story in the news, other than this was a super big story, actually. And actually, I, for some reason, it dropped off our headlines on the, the, the newsletter. But uh, it's been put out there that cannabis may actually relieve autism symptoms based on this Israeli study that we have been following. Plus uh, all the mothers yeah. and all the people plus, who are already using yes, it. Yes, plus all the bottom up. Uh, work that's being done with regards to autism and families and, and every family that's suffering and s with, with a child suffering for something, all the bottom up work that's being done. And we talked about that with uh, Dr. Russo and we're going to, we are going to uh, have our video either maybe this week. We'll see how things Brain go. Brain stuff is a mystery. It is. It is. And, but one thing we do know is cannabis helps dementia. Uh, cannabis and, uh, helps brain stuff. Ha helps brain stuff as well. Yeah, all kinds of brain stuff. Even mm -hmm. the U.S. government knows it with its patent. So they know. Uh, and uh, the Israelis are once again uh, top of the science heap, making sure that we know that uh, what cannabis can be used for. Oh. Uh, other news, interestingly, this week, uh, Doctor uh, Professor Mashalam, uh, if you know anything about Israeli scientists and studies of uh, cannabis. Um, he's going to be working with GW Pharmaceuticals. I don't know if you heard that, Alexis. Mazel tov. But uh, he apparently is going to be working with GW Pharmaceuticals, and he is a very big proponent of cannabidiol. Uh, and I'd love to have a discussion with him with his thoughts on THC, huh. because every the, every other doctor we talk to uh, says you need a little THC in this patient group. So interesting that he's going to be working with GW Pharmaceuticals. They are probably going to be testing Sativex uh, soon, uh, probably putting that through the FDA. Uh, that has THC in it, I think. So they're going to have to do something on the federal level. And all the signs look like something's going to happen on federal level. So uh, let's get into some of the other stories that we're going to talk to Alexis about. Just briefly, uh, one of the things we're talking about, of course, is that ad. And it's been all over the media how this ad was rejected. And we talked about it last week that uh, pretty much uh, uh, this was, th I think this was a, it was planned. They knew where they were going to get turned down by CBS. Uh, and um, it was just a PR, a PR move for this company, Acreage Holdings, which is a for-profit, though medical cannabis. They're a top-down, uh, you know, large vertically integrated company. It is one of the is the largest medical cannabis company in the United States. Um, so, uh, you know, I think they knew what was going on. They knew they were going to be, uh, they were going to be um, uh, 
shut down with that commercial. And um, interesting story this week, week about it was Mike Adams, who writes about cannabis over at um, Forbes. I know Daily Dope is familiar. A lot of folks are. But he basically says, uh, yeah, it's good they got it turned down because that's not where marijuana is going in America. It's going tax and regulate like alcohol, which unfortunately the Democrats are on board doing, which is very disappointing because that's the way I guess they think they can do it with H.R. 420 tax and regulate like alcohol bill. Uh -huh. um, and he thinks he's supporting that in the mainstream media um, over at Forbes, Mike Adams. Uh, he doesn't think medical marijuana is going to be around. For very much longer, similar to when alcohol prohibition, uh, every all the doctors were finding ways to give people alcohol for ailments. And once prohibition and the, and the constitutional amendment was made, medical, the you know the garbage medical alcohol went away uh, because people gave alcohol. Uh, it's not the same. No. <laughs> it's not the same at all. So it needs its own classification. Yes, Chella. Cannabis is a neuroprotectant, and alcohol is a neurotoxin. Yes, they're not the same. Indeed, Nikki Smith. Free the plant, free the people. Yes. <laughs> uh, we agree. We agree. Uh, so, folks, let us. Let us move forward, shall we? Let us. Let us get into it. Yep. Uh, we have a very special guest who's been waiting patiently mm -hmm. to join us. So, uh, we are going to be right back with Alexis Bortel joining us in the chat. Get your questions ready. Drop, yeah. them, into the, uh, drop them into the chat if you want. And uh, we'll bring some questions, but we're going to talk about some stuff right up the top. Uh, but what I'd like to do right now is go ahead and play this week. Uh, Alexis, as I mentioned at the top of the show, she was doing a little activism. Uh, not only is she suing the federal government, uh, in that case, uh, we'll talk a little bit about not too much. We're waiting on uh, some uh, some answers from the appeals court. But let's just before we uh, get too much into it, let's watch this video. Um of uh, its brief, they gave folks a brief time to uh, testify, and um, this is Alexis's testimony in front of the state of Colorado. And when we come back, we will be joined by Alexis Bortel. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Read for Revolution Live. Subscribe, get notifications, share this broadcast. It's going to be good. Here we go. Thank you. My name is Alexis Bortel. Don't need to spell it or anything. Yeah. Okay. I'm here to testify, testify for Senate Bill 13. I'm a 13-year-old medical cannabis refugee, daughter of two U.S. veterans, and a plaintiff in a federal cannabis lawsuit, Washington versus Whitaker. I'm also the co-owner of One Love Organics and Patches of Hope, where we grow organic food on our farm for homeless and hungry people in Colorado. First, I want to thank you. A few years ago in Texas, I was losing a battle with epilepsy, but I was able to relocate to Colorado where I got access to cannabis, and today I am almost four years seizure-free thanks to cannabis. Please, um, we have certain customs and decorum here, so no clapping is allowed. Notice I didn't say CB, and that's not a mistake. I use whole plant cannabis. So the question some of you may be asking yourself is, why is she here? People with epilepsy already have access to cannabis. In a way, that is part of my point. If you take away all the labels, product advertisement, trade shows, so-called experts, and tax policies and medical cannabis, then what's left? The answer is patients like me, our families, and our desire for relief, no matter what our condition is. Colorado law already states that cannabis can be recommended as a medicine by doctors. My point is that every patient should have equal access to every medicine our doctor thinks can improve our lives. I should never have better health care than other patients because a politician thinks I should, or because my illness makes me part of some chosen group or class. You've done your part. You've given our doctors legal access to a powerful and safe agriculture-based medicine that almost anyone can safely grow or buy. The rest is and should be on us Colorado citizens. Again, I support this bill, but I am asking all of you a bigger question. Do cannabis patients like me have equal liberties and freedoms to you? If so, I'm asking you to help me abolish the qualifying conditions list so our doctors can finally do their jobs and we cannabis patients 
and our families can focus on our recovery. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself and then we'll do questions. My name is, my name is Dean Bortel. I'm her father. I'm not testifying. She asked me to come up. I, if you have a question, I'd be happy to answer it, but I'm just here for her. Thank you for supporting your daughter today. Well, we are all here today in support of this young reefer revolutionary and cannabis warrior, Alexis Bortel. Alexis, welcome to the show. You can clap here. Hey. Clap, everybody. <laughs> everybody can clap. <laughs> uh, I, I think I heard you. I think I heard I you. Her. I think we're good. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. Hi. Awesome. Welcome to the show, Alexis. Thank you so much for yeah, everything thanks. you do. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course, it's an honor, uh, honestly. Oh gosh, yeah, I, you know, I, I am, I, uh, it's, uh, I'm humbled to say you're a friend of the show, and honored to have you as really our first guest uh, in this new uh, evolving of uh, this new evolution, revolution of our show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got lots of folks jumping in the chat, uh, so uh, we got lots of people watching. Thank you guys for jumping in. Uh, Chella is, uh, if you have a question for Alexis, please drop it in the chat. Chella is going to keep. Uh, Keep uh, track of those if she can. The, uh, the chat is going hot and heavy. Uh, but Alexis, that was your testimony in front of the Colorado State Health Services, the Senate, Colorado State Senate, uh, one of their Health and Human Services committees uh, with regards to this law in Colorado. Um, for, and, and, you know, for, for those of you who don't know who Alexis Wortel is in our chat, I think everybody does. Uh, well, with, just in case. Just in case. Alexis is not only... Uh, a, an activist and a medical cannabis refugee in Colorado. She's an entrepreneur, an author, and a multiple award winner uh, from uh, the cannabis industry on her activism and constant uh, fight for liberty and for patience, as you saw in that testimony. Uh, so folks, um, thank you for being here. Thank you, Alexis. Why did you feel it necessary? You sort of explained that, but tell us a little bit more about this qualifying conditions list and why it bothers you so much that these states are attaching them to what the what doctors and their patients want to do with medical cannabis. Well, the qualifying conditions list, it's a list here in Colorado of illnesses that you can have that you're legally able to treat with cannabis. And if you're not on this list, then you don't have access to medical cannabis. And I think it's wrong because I have epilepsy. So I already, I'm on the list, but I especially did that testimony because I think everyone should have access to it. And does the government go to the doctors with you? They wouldn't know what you need for it. So I think that it should be up to your families and maybe even your doctors if you want. But I think we should leave it to families and doctors like we should have in the first place. Uh -huh. uh, well, we certainly agree with that on uh, in principle, and I would like our doctors uh, that we do have to be educated in the endocannabinoid system, which is uh, so rarely found in the medical profession. Uh, it drives me crazy that these experts go on TV and say, well, I'm a doctor and there's uh, there's no proof and we don't know much about it. We need more research, blah, blah, blah. It's not medicine. They're coming out this in these last couple of weeks. You know, there's doctors writing op-eds saying cannabis is not medicine. It's just like booze. They And it just drives me nuts that the, these guys are not trained in the endocannabinoids. And so that's my first question now always to doctors is how much training do you have in the endocannabinoid system? And if they have an opinion about medical cannabis, it's essentially irrelevant. Uh, so, but yes, it, I, as you said, you know, if you want to add your doctors to that mix, that's great because cannabis has never killed anybody in 3000 years. And in fact, I'd say it probably really hasn't even hurt anybody. Um, but um, it, it should definitely be at a baseline a decision between the patients and the doctors and you choose your doctor. And it's a personal decision. One of the conversations was having on Twitter today with one of our followers uh, was that um, the, uh, the the topic about pregnancy and cannabis and that bud tenders are saying, oh, you know, they're, they're recommending cannabis to pregnant women. Once again, it's between you and your doctor. And it's a very personal decision, especially in that in, with that condition condition because they make it a condition <laughs> as far as insurance goes. So uh, that's great. Agree with you 100%. These lists are ridiculous. Uh -huh. They need to go away. Uh -huh. um, and uh, just free the plant, 
free the people, let them, let them use it for opioids, let them use them for whatever they need. Uh, let the kids, let the kids and the parents and the doctors do it together. And this is bottom up. This is bottom up because the FDA, you know, the GW pharmaceuticals, they're going to get into it when they can, when they've got the money for their isolates. But, uh, this, pl this up, bottom up plant revolution is happening with families and, uh, and patients like you, Alexis. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the, um, uh, the advertising for the Super Bowl, some sport, that sport event that's going on today, <laughs> that Super Bowl that's going on today. Um, what are, what's your opinion on the, the fact, well, the fact that they just turned down the ad, uh, that's one thing, but yet the Super Bowl itself and the stadium and the fans are sort of advertising about cannabis on the back end, but not letting the audience know about the medical side of it. Uh, we know that tax and regulate is where they're going and they're trying to bury medical. So uh, talk a little bit about this advertising that uh, you were talking about on Twitter uh, this week and uh, where you are with regards to that ad and that PSA. W is, was that appropriate for Super Bowl? Or should it have been played and accepted? Well, I know Amy, she was in that ad and I think you already showed it to them. It was just basically about the patients and how we should have access to cannabis and just spreading just everything about cannabis to other people and how it has medical values. But CBS and the Super Bowl, they denied it. They are not going to let it air. But yet they let a CBD coffee advertisement get sent out on the phones, on the big screen and everything. And I think it's kind of hypocritical and it's sad because apparently the money that comes from this coffee is more important than our patients, including me and all our lives. So I, it makes, I'm, I respect them, but I don't think it was a wise decision. And I just, I don't like how they did that. I don't. Right. Right. No, it was a, uh, it's baristas is the name of the company and they're hooked up also with Amazon um, that's how they're marketing and selling their stuff. So you have these giant mega corporations, um, that are pushing the tax and regulate the for-profit cannabis side. Uh, this is happening, uh, on the federal level. Uh, I don't know if it's because that's the way they think they can get it in. Uh, but I, I just find it crazy that, that the medical cannabis aspect of it, you have complete, I mean, it's cognitive dissonance, really. You have one side, real doctors that study this, no, in like in Israel and other countries and some in the United States study this and go, Oh yeah, this is medicine. Even smoke cannabis is medicine. Uh, in, in all of these forms, this is definitely medicine. And then you have the, uh, uh, these, I don't know if they're just because they're in the take of big pharma or what it is, or they're just in denial or they're, you know, don't want to look at the evidence, uh, are saying, Oh no, it's not medicine, but oh yeah, if you want to tax and regulate it, that's a good idea. So it is all about the profit. It's all about the taxes as far as it goes for legislators. What's that, Joe? Nothing. Sorry. Restrict and limit. <clears throat> Tax and regulate. Restrict and limit. Restrict and limit. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's very, very good. That's exactly what it is. Uh, more, le more illegal now that it's legal. Mm -hmm. uh, the busts are going off like crazy. The arrests are happening. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the cities sort of denying their, well, we're not going to prosecute. We're not going to prosecute. But uh, you have uh, the feds are on fire. Um, the, the FDA is on fire taking hemp. Hemp CBD products off the shelf in some states. Now here's my, here, now wait a minute. Alexis, the FDA says you technically can't put CBD in food. How is it they're able to advertise despite the FDA saying, wait a minute, CBD, we, we're in charge of that. They just literally raided a shop uh -huh. two weeks ago and pulled off any product for human consumption with CBD in it because it's not legal to sell according to them. And here they are advertising. So we have this hypocrisy that is just beyond, beyond belief. Uh, and there's John Boehner saying he's all in on cannabis. Uh, he's going to have to get some laws changed. Uh, he's all in on tax and regulate cannabis. Yeah. Not yeah. on patient liberty. You know, he's not looking at it to be tomatoes. He doesn't want home grow. He uh, wants to grows. sell people cannabis. That's the other angle they're going for is that even in the tax and regulate scream. Oh yeah, it's adult. You can use it. You can have it. You can have the plants, but you can't grow any. You can't grow it in your, uh, yeah. go ahead, Alexis. You have something to say? What do you think yeah. about, um, home grow and, uh, the, 
states that are um, new to cannabis legislation or just coming on board with cannabis legislation, some of them are proposing um, legislation that has no home grow, like New York. Um, do you think that people should support that legislation and take what they can get, or should they hold out for home grow? What are your thoughts on that? I think that we should let them home grow because what if they can't afford it? Because if the government turn, gives it to like the big pharma, the tax money, it'll be over the roof and a lot of patients won't afford it. And if they can't get their medicine, then what's the point? Yeah. So I, and I don't believe in baby steps either. Cause when we made mm. this cannabis, when we made it, I guess unlegalized, I, I don't know the word for that, but we didn't take baby steps. We literally just said, Oh my gosh, you can't have it anymore. Right. So what's yes, the point in baby steps it, yes. now, especially when patients' lives are on the line? I think mm. we need to hustle, just get it straightened out and just move on. Just keep the government out of our lives. Yes. I love that. Agreed. Agreed. I love that. <clears throat> uh, we're going up to Sacramento um, this week. We're leaving tomorrow and we're going to lobby the legislature with the Alzheimer's Association. And um, we're asked to bring our personal stories. And, of course, you guys know, um, and some of you maybe don't know, so I'll tell you, our thing is cannabis helps dementia. My mom um, has uh, has had dementia for nine years now. And um, when we fir finally started using it with her, it changed everything. And it made life so much better. Um, and it helps through every stage of the process. But her doctors were really against it. And they kept it from us almost, um, they almost held us hostage. They held us hostage. They did hold us hostage. They held us hostage. <laughs> they said, if you want this one drug uh, that at the time allegedly was the best for that um, for that diagnosis, um, which it isn't, cannabis is better, yeah. I later found out because when he denied me and held me hostage, I had to do the research. And when I did the research, I went, oh, there's a U.S. patent, 6630507B1, hmm. that is a neuroprotectant for ischemic attacks and good for Alzheimer's. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm sorry. What's that? <laughs> but uh, this <laughs> is... Speaking of, what's that book? This is the book that I made to take up to our show and tell um, with the legislators. Uh, sorry about the glare. Uh, but there's a little collage, um, you know, of, of my mom. And us having fun together. And um, it's a book full of um, studies <laughs> that show that cannabis helps dementia. Yeah, they keep asking for research. So there's some research. So we're going to give the legislature some research. And um, <laughs> yeah, so let me ask you, Alexis, when you testified, um, what was the vibe in the room? What was it like for you there? What did they, what did it feel like? How were you being received by the people? What did it feel like? Well, in the actual room, it yeah. seemed like everyone was testifying for it. Like, I can't remember completely, but I think there are only one or so people, or if not none, that were testifying completely against it. So I think it was a really positive environment. Um, a lot of people there, they recognized me. I talked to them. They were all nice. Everyone was awesome. awesome. And I just... It was really fun, and I actually enjoy doing things like that. And I know a lot of kids don't do that on a regular basis; go testify court or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Blows it blows me away that you <laughs> that you do that. You we're so impressed. Yeah, we are so impressed. Yeah, uh, that and we were talking to your dad a little bit before, and he just really is impressed by you too, and that you that you are a leader, and uh, it really is you are really set an example for everyone in this industry, not just children. But for the adults, too, on how, well, to, how to take this to the man. Yeah, well, I mean, adults, you know, maybe like us, um, you know, who've been recreational users for, or we thought of ourselves as recreational users for a long, long time, but mm -hmm. really we were medicinal users, we figured out, later. Um, not life and death, but still um, medicinal users nevertheless. Um, uh Oh, shoot. I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, uh, I want to say that Larry Gillock is a, uh, follows you on Instagram um, and loves to, uh, wanted to, loves to have the opportunity to say thank you 
for everything you stand for, wise, well beyond your years, our team loves what you're doing. So, yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions for Alexis, uh, drop them in the chat and I'll make sure to read them to her. The Fowlers also said hello. I think I read that earlier. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, we're having a lot of uh, Team Alexis is, uh, share, they share this uh, this broadcast. Make sure you guys share. Uh, this is a really special, special broadcast here at Reefer Revolution Live. We have Alexis Bortel for the hour talking about the news this week. Uh, all about uh, what's going on at the Super Bowl uh, with regards to cannabis and its rejection, as well as liberty in general for cannabis patients and all of us, really, uh, for, who want to use this plant. Uh, when we do believe that when you recreate, you medicate, should be a vitamin, quite frankly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> should be a vitamin. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll take... I, now, I, I agree with this baby's, you know... These, okay, yeah, we're, so we're that's talking where about we were going. incrementalism. Incrementalism, is what we were talking thank about you. It. Brought it back to the train of Thanks, thought there. Baby. <laughs> incrementalism. So recreational users are like, oh well, at least, right. at least you know you can have CBD, and right. CBD helps a lot of people. So we can start there, and that's like a nose in the tent. And you know, I can see what they're saying, but I think for people who have been uh, most affected by the drug war, I don't think that incrementalism helps them. And I think that other people, like Dave and I, for instance, we've always had access to cannabis, whether it was legal or not. I mean, we live in California. We live in Hawaii. We go to places that have cannabis. We've never been without cannabis, legal or not. Well, that's part of what the, you know, the argument we talk about when the, uh, uh, you know, they're busting all that, that, that collective, the, the collective in the Laguna Woods. They can't, can't, the guy's been there for decades or years, as long as there's been medical cannabis in California providing it for people. And he shut down. You know, there are all these, it's, in, it's happening up in Canada. You know, it's the it's same things going on there. It's a corporate cannabis takeover in medicinal as well as, as you know, they're, they're merging them together into this monster. You know, we did it in California, called it Maurkursa, uh, the curse of Maurkursa, making the, uh, um, uh, medical laws merge with the uh, recreational laws. Now there are still rights here in California for patients, which is very important. A lot of California medical cannabis patients don't know their rights. You still have the right to grow more than six plants in the state of California. If you have a medical cannabis card. Yeah. We just learned that you, you can grow up to uh, 24 plants or more, depending on how much your, how many your doctor, how much your doctor says you need. But you know, not, a, not a lot of us are farmers. That's right. That's right. Um, the, we don't even have soil yet. Not yet. We're going to. We try don't have to... money to buy si soil. It's not like you can run out and buy all this stuff and start your thing. Well, and, we want to you know, do it from the ground up, literally, and make right. our own soil. But if you're a real medical patient, so like those yeah. of us who've been recreational patients for well, patients, yeah, for a long, long time, uh, and getting it legally, illegally, that's one thing. But someone like you, for instance, who really, really depends on it medically, you can't live without it. You need it regulated to a degree you need it pure you need it tested you need it to certain specifications all the time right well that's kind of why you started your own company probably right <laughs> alexis <laughs> yeah i my dad won't let me come home actually and say can i get a job like he not only him but we really believe in being entrepreneurs and starting your own business and just spreading I guess the good news about cannabis or whatever it is you're into and just trying to help everyone in general. Well, we see that a lot. We say we saw a lot of people at Canamed where it's uh, it basically it's because their child is suffering. They needed to do it themselves. And now they're getting into the space. They're getting into the, uh, you know, because they felt they have to because no one else was providing what they want. They didn't want to go. You know, they got stuff that was had alcohol in it or just, you know, from the guy. And you didn't know you're going to get the right stuff. So they're like, I'm just going to make my own. We're just going to make our own stuff, start a company. So uh, do that. Tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurship. You have two companies, really, and both of them are amazing uh, products. The soaps are amazing. Yeah. And then you do great work with uh, the, the Patches of Hope. So talk a little bit about uh, your entrepreneurship and uh, what you're doing in the space for the pe for people. Well, we have a company called One Love Organics, and we make goat milk soap. And most of them, well, we're transferring them all to hemp soaps. And oh, far out. Learning goes to Patches of Hope. And if you don't already know, Patches of Hope is our program where we feed the homeless and hungry people in Colorado, some patient families also. 
and yes, we just give them free fruits and vegetables, and I'd just really love to spread it and help as many people as I can. So that's kind of why we started the soaps. Awesome. That's uh, you know, that's a that's a good model. And I love <laughs> that you're moving to all hemp. Are you doing that so that it's more accessible to all people, so that it uses the whole plant? What are the reasons that you're transferring from goat milk to um, hemp? We're still using the goat milk and the hemp. It's just before we just made regular goat milk soap, no hemp. Uh -huh. But not not only does hemp help me medically and everything, it is just so awesome. It makes your skin nice and moist so it doesn't dry out. I actually prefer the hemp soaps. And uh -huh. a lot of people clearly love them as not only that, but our sales on the hemp soaps are pretty high compared to the non. So right, right. Well, they're vegan, right? It. Yeah, they're vegan, yeah, right? Yeah. The hemp soaps? Jeremy Fowler, oh, cool. Jeremy Fowler says, absolute right. best soap ever. Awesome. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of soap supporters in there for awesome. Uh, I have a organics. couple questions. Uh, go for it, John. So, Holy Cannabis Oil is asking. Oh, hi, Holy Cannabis. Uh, thank you, Alexis. Um, he would love to know if you can what your protocol is that you're doing. Uh, he has a a friend who also has um seizures, epilepsy, and uh. Do you do any other prescriptions? No, I just take cannabis for my epilepsy. And of course, by all and all that, we have um, midazolam as an emergency medicine, but we've never had to use it here in Colorado because cannabis is, and THC, I'm not leaving out THC. It's definitely an important part of it. It has just really helped me. And I've, I'm almost four years seizure free. Awesome. So is that enough research for the government to yeah hello like, are you done stalling <laughs> four years seizure free and how did you stumble upon this therapy like the cannabis how did yeah you, huh. how did you how did that happen it was actually pretty random like it was just a normal day in texas um i had epilepsy of course um i wasn't doing too well and my parents just turned on the TV and there's this program called Weed Too. Uh -huh. I haven't talked about this in a while. Um, so it just described cannabis. My pa my parents were like, oh my goodness, if this, because I've been through so many prescriptions, none of them were working. Uh -huh. And so they were just like, if, does this really work? And then sadly and very unfortunately, they looked and it wasn't legal in Texas. So we just had we, that's when we started kind of Team Alexis at trying to get it legal. Sadly, by the time I had a big seizure, it was too late for Texas, so we had to move here. We moved in like two weeks. It was a really rush, but I I wouldn't go back. It's just Colorado. It feels like it's adopted me. I'll go back in winters maybe, but that's that's it. I love Colorado. Awesome. Well, it, it was a lifesaver, right? It was. It it probably saved my life, honestly. Yeah. Awesome. Now, did you guys Cer work? Certainly with... increased your quality of life for you know for the yeah. rest of your life. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys work with doctors in Colorado, or did you sort of uh, figure it out on your own by keeping track and stuff? We have um, we hired a couple of doctors here in Colorado mm -hmm. to kind of help suggest and manage the cannabis. Cool. We started off with a CBD only oil. Okay. That worked for. A good 30 days to about a month mm -hmm. and then I did have a seizure uh -huh. so they up they said well why don't you try THC and we did that and ever since then it's just been steer clear seizures so wow yeah. and I think holy cannabis oil is looking for like what dose did they start you on when you were what how old were you when they started you and how cannabis? how big were you yeah yeah, yeah. um so Probably when I was around nine, -ish. right? I'm I'm guessing because a four year seizure free. Yeah, that makes yeah sense. right. That nine, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not great with math, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm just really glad they did because I don't doubt at all it saved my life. I could have died in Texas. So Do now you, mind? you now what is the like cannabis co the connoisseur? The question. I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, just one, just to follow up on that before we digress. Um, what did they start you on? If you're allowed to talk about it, what did they, did they start you on 25 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of THC twice a day? Or what did they start you on at nine years old, tiny little person? Uh, I mean, I'll have to remember. That was a while ago. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Well, how about the person you are now, the size you are now? Roughly, what do you take now, if you don't mind telling I take, us? I, I, I can tell you. I take 0.9 milligrams per pound per day of CBD and about 10 milligrams of THC. So I do take more THC per day. Okay. And I take over three doses. I take it morning, evening, and afternoon. So that's a total of three doses of the THC a day and three of the Haley's Health. So you're you're high all day. Yeah, yeah. You're totally high. <laughs> you're all high day and stoned long. all day. Look at you. You're looking at you right now. You're, you're sitting so on the couch. You're so unproductive. Yep, yeah, sitting on the couch. You're sitting on the couch. Hang on. That's out. right. You're a typical teenage stoner. <laughs> wow. Uh, there's you know that's if I just, only of course I'm joking. The typical teenage stoners <laughs> were running two businesses and testifying in Congress. Well, you know I, that must be know, why right? they don't want everybody using cannabis. Right. Too productive. Because it'd be far. Yeah far too productive and question the man way too much. Well, my point, and well, my <laughs> point is, is that, is that especially when you're using it therapeutically uh, for a, uh, as a medicine, um, there are, you know, there are kids that take upwards of, you know, 700 milligrams a day. Right. You oh, know, yeah. and yeah. without, without their, an, into, an intoxication effect, they basically titrate up and it becomes part of what's keeping them alive and in good health. Um, it's not, you know, it's not like they're eating a hundred milligram edible, like some stupid journalist and freaking out in a hotel room. Well, yeah. These kids are working with doctors and their parents and, you know, this whole reefer madness about, and there's a story they're doing on NBC this week, uh, in our neck of the woods where they're literally busting out gummy worms next to cannabis gummy worms and telling the kids, oh. pick one. Which one is the tea? Which one is the drug? And which one is the candy? I'm like, it's this, I think you're abusing these children. They are abusing those children. That's Uh, terrible. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like fun, right? I mean, and, uh, but, but it's just, it's just so (laughs) ridiculous that that's the, because it's, you know, because they pigeonhole it into out, like with alcohol, this whole idea that it's like alcohol. It's not like alcohol. This is being used medicinally and these, this bottom up families are, are figuring out what these kids, look, it's that, that, look at that dosage. That was actually a dosage somebody came up for you, Alexis, for this many milligrams per of CBD and THC ratio to your kilograms for body weight keeps you seizure free for a thousand plus days, almost four years. That's so that's amazing. pretty damn good medicine as far as I'm concerned. But and, yeah, yeah, yeah. insurance right. doesn't pay for it, does it? Right. No, it doesn't. It's pretty expensive. But That's why you got to grow your own. <laughs> it's not right. as expensive as Epidiolex. You know how much that costs, right? right. Yes. 32 grand a year or something like, like that. Right. And that oh, there's happens a, when the government I, gets involved. There's a story this right. week, Alexis, we're going to play where they won't even let an Epidiolex in the school. Wow. Um, prescribed by the doctor, the school will not let it on the school grounds, even though it's FDA approved. Prescribed by a doctor, they won't let it on the school grounds. And this is in this is in Ohio. This is in Ohio. This week story. So uh, even when they go through this bullshit FDA, sorry FDA approval process, <laughs> um, they're still keeping kids from get using medicine that it's designed for. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, quick question from Cannabis Sativa: uh, okay. Does Alexis support? Legislation to protect medical marijuana users from drug tests, and does she support laws to prevent landlords from discriminating against cannabis users? Well, about the landlords thing, um, kind of sad that has to be a law, honestly. Like, right? <laughs> like, if it's if you're paying the rent and everything, you're just taking care of yourself. Pay, like, why do they need to get involved? Like, you're not causing fires in your house, are you? No. So. Why would they get involved? I don't. They, if you have to, unfortunately, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and well, yeah, well, it's happening all all over, and of course, jobs with drug tests. Um, you know, that's that's how they're, yeah. how they're they're how they're finding ways to keep people from using their medicine. I mean, they don't test for Vicodin, uh, or they did that super silly study in um, the Michigan uh, University that oh yeah, over half cannabis patients are driving while they're. In, using while they're intoxicated uh intoxicated well, driving like driving under influence is already illegal oh, yeah, yeah exactly it's, like cannabis. it's it's crazy and yeah. they and and actually the laws are basically it's up to the it's up to the, to the cop to determine if you're impaired or not right and if he says you're impaired doesn't matter if drug tests or anything like that that's all just backup 
Those are all, that's just all backup tests for court. It's it's up to the cop. If you're impaired, if you're trained to figure out an impaired driver weaving, well, guess what? You're impaired. <laughs> and cannabis, uh, cannabis users, I find, if you don't add alcohol, because that's all, that would be a good PSA as well. It'd be like, hey guys, don't, don't mix cannabis with alcohol. It usually get, turns out bad or something <laughs> because it does. Uh, and that's all when you ever find it, you have people that are always using alcohol in conjunction with. So alcohol is bad in all instances. Uh, cannabis, however, if you're just using it alone, you have much better discretion. You know you're too high to drive. Can't, alcohol works the other way. Alcohol actually invites you to drive. <laughs> it, right. it makes you think you're going to be a great driver. Uh, so, you know, it's like, once again, it's completely a different drug, different uh, animal. It's an agri. What did you, what did you, we've, with the senator the, from uh, Representative, Representative Terry from, from Tennessee. Tennessee, an agricultural medicine. Is that you correct? told us, right? I think that's what he calls it, right, Alexis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. we like that. We like that definition in agricultural me medicine. Uh we went on I went on a little rant there. Uh -huh. Um but um any more questions from the chat, Chella? We want to jump in any more um, questions? Hello from Texas from yes. a few people. Awesome. They miss you. Uh, but you're doing great work, so you know. Keep on keeping on. I'm very heartened by um, you telling us the mood of the room when you testify that it was very um, up and positive, um, especially because the new governor of Colorado, by the way, have you met with him since he's so super pro cannabis? I was wondering if you might have met with him. Jared Polis. Jared Polis. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to go through the chambers and signed by the governor soon. What do you think? I still, I'd like to meet with Jared Polis and I've been trying to set up a meeting. So right. I hope we can get that done. I guess cool. ASAP. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he probably what? should, he probably should meet with the number one kit, cannabis advocate in the state. That'd be a good <sighs> idea. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. So cool. Yeah. So I can't, I make this own rule to myself. I can't really judge politicians too much until I meet them in person. Um, so I just really like to meet Jared Polis and if he hears this, you know, just set up a meeting with me, email me, whatever I'll answer and just talk. Well, the door is open. Alexis totally. is ready, ready to come in and chat. Love it. Uh, obviously, you know where the capital is. So yeah, that's right. uh, I don't think you'll have a problem uh, getting there. Yeah, I was there last Thursday. I mean, that's yeah, right. That's right. There. You were there. You yeah, can get there. Exactly. No problem. Uh, well, you know, I'm sure that if, if it can make it through, whatever can make it through, uh, if it's a good bill, uh, he will sign it, uh, considering his pro stance. He right. was certainly one of the champions in the Congress. Um, and federally, it looks like we're going to see some action, uh, maybe in research, uh, maybe in, uh, in banking, maybe in, because of course they want their money. Uh, and they're, they can't get their profits if you can't put it in a bank and you can't put your stock on the New York Stock Exchange if, uh, if it's, uh, federally illegal and the banks won't do it. So those things are going to probably have to change. Uh -huh. Um, at least now what I find it very curious is that, um, I, there's a video this week we're going to show about one of the bills that's going through Congress being pushed by Representative Matt Gates. Uh, now Matt Gates is, he has a personal connection. The medicinal cannabis, I think he has, uh, maybe it might be his child. I'm not 100% sure, but there is definitely something, uh, a family connection there. Um, but he is definitely wants research done and he's pushing for a bipartisan bill. And these are young people in the, uh, in the house that are pushing this. Um, and, um, he's inviting, of course, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez to co-sponsor. <laughs> Uh, this bill, which I, I actually would like to see her do. I'd like to see her co-sponsor any of the cannabis bills that are currently moving through Congress, including uh, uh, Barbara Lee's bill. Uh, but um, to, on, on the federal level, Alexis, what do you think? Uh, do you think that they are going to be able to reschedule it? I know we want it off of the schedule, but do you think it's going to be a rescheduling uh, what are your feelings on the federal level? What's going to happen? I know we have the lawsuit. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, whatever you can. I know you've yeah, recently, yeah. you've recently sort of been let out of a gag order ish, uh, situation. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, um, we know we're waiting for, uh, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, mm -hmm. to give a reading or give a, uh, um, a finding. 
Uh, and we we know that it's uh, the longer the better is what we think. So could you comment on the federal uh, the lawsuit, the, the the challenge federally, and maybe the legislation that's going through federally? Well, I guess the government it is slow. It is very slow, <laughs> but you know we're just trying to get through it. Um, so far, in my opinion, it all seems good. Um, it's all I, I don't know how much I can say here. My lawyer would get mad at me. So oh, we don't no, want no. that. No, we don't want that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I just, it's going pretty well. And we're just going to keep fighting. We're going to win. And yeah. I'm just excited. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what do you think about the Michigan suit? Have you heard that um, a group in Michigan is uh, suing the state to take it off the State Controlled Substances Act? Um, I've heard of it like, of vaguely like a little bit but why i just come it's fine but i'm just confused why just the states because if it's still federally illegal they still consider it dangerous right uh, right if it's still on schedule five they can still like arrest you i mean it's still federally illegal yeah so I, it's yeah it's federal sure, it's always tr federal always guess, trump state right yeah it's fine i guess if you want to take baby steps um uh -huh. but I just really prefer just get it out of our way and let us stick with our families and do what we really want, of course, without hurting our neighbor. And that's what liberty is. There's two kinds of liberty. There's negative liberty and there's positive liberty. Mm. And I'm just going to give you an example here. Positive liberty is if you are in a field and you have to give up, get out and there's landmines all around you and the government gives you a map. Well, then everything's up to the government because if they give you the wrong map, you're dead. Hmm. But negative liberty is where you're just in the field. There's no landmines, there's no map, you're <coughs> yourself. So I just, I just wanted to get that out there, especially. I like oh. it. It's a, it's a very, that's an intriguing liberty. Uh, comparison. The landmine, uh, I guess the government probably put the landmines there too. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's yeah, like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're, they're screwing you on yeah. both ends. Going to put landmines down, not give you a map. Uh, oh, no, or, no government, no landmines. No government, no landmines. <laughs> and then you don't need a map. You can just grow, you can just yeah. grow plants on that land. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's, uh, yeah, that's, well, you know, it, that's really the argument that um, this, why cannabis crosses over, I think, um, party lines and uh, it really is, is beyond party is that at, at the basis of this, what we're supposed to be anyway, as a country, as a basis is liberty. And um, everybody, you know, for the most part, are on board that. Um, I think that's why, you know, even Trump says, you know, I know people with medical marijuana, I think, and he says, I think that should, you know, that should be, a, that should be nationally legal, really, I think is what he originally had said. And then uh, it's up to the states with regards to recreation. So uh, that has to do with rights. It has to do with liberty. Um, there's a law... Uh, being uh, floated here uh, in California with regards to uh, 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 consumption. Uh, I think it's California because uh, consumption is a big issue. Do we have the liberty? We, and now that you've given us the right to use this plant for whatever reason we're using it for, we, can't we consume it somewhere? Or are you going to make us do it, you know, feel like uh, criminals and drug addicts and, and uh, squirrel away in our, in our hovel? You know, where you can't, your people can't, your neighbors can't see you grow that plant. Don't let them see you grow those, uh, those, those tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, I, it's, it's gotta be a, uh, they're going to try to do what they can legislatively. Unfortunately, it's going to be tax and regulate on a federal level. That's what they're going to do. They're going to probably reschedule it down to maybe, I don't know, four. <laughs> I'm writing a nice note this week to every member of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus to let them know that cannabis is a neuroprotectant. And alcohol is a neurotoxin and that it is not like alcohol and they need to stop that. Yeah. I know. Stop that. <sighs> yeah. I think everyone who's interested should all write a nice note to all these people on the Congressional Cannabis Caucus. I think, or maybe it's a tweet, whatever your favorite method of communication is with your elected <sighs> officials. Let's do that this week because they're, they're really like, Oh, let's get these bills done. Oh, yay, marijuana. No, dude. First of all, it's cannabis. <laughs> and second yeah. of all, it's not like alcohol. <laughs> right. Right. So they need to hear from us because, um, 
I'd say the mainstream of recreational users think it's like alcohol. Oh, and well. They don't realize. That's part of the problem. You know, it's just all the bad stigma. Most of it's not even true. It's just like, yeah. what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have to. They're just making stuff up. If we let <laughs> them, we're going to have to go on this very circuitous path to get to where we need to go. Like when you're in hospice and you're on morphine and um, if the morphine isn't quite doing the job, they give you more morphine, which will just, you know, screw you up worse. But well, you're CBD, pretty screwed already. But I know, but still, but CBD makes the pain relieving um, elements of morphine work better. So if they were doing morphine with CBD, it would be much nicer for the patient because they won't get all stopped up as easily because morphine slows everything down, whereas yeah. cannabis yeah. does not. So maybe they won't need nearly as much morphine and they can have a, you know, equally slow, you know, you know, transition out, but it can be better because cannabis can help. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, you know, we it's... need to tell these stories to all of our electeds. They don't know, and we can't get mad at them for not knowing. They just don't know. Yeah. Thank you for your thank you for your efforts, but we'd like to clear some things up. <laughs> right. Exactly. You uh... don't know. I mean, you know, court. How much? I'm not good with math. A quarter of your life has been uh, surrounded with cannabis knowledge. That's a long time. Yeah. 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 You it's know, certainly more than any doctor in in the AMA has right. been has been trained. You know, and certainly more than any legislator. So we need to uh, politely educate them. You were so um, kind how you were talking to them in your, um, you were so calm. I really, really. And thanking them. Yes, very great. Th really, really yeah, great. I want to thank your, you. Your, your testimony like, wow. is on point, really was. Well. She's so good. Yeah, so yeah. You know how to work them. You know how to work Can those guys. Can I put guys. something out there? Yeah, please. Yes. I this is kind of my own joke. I call recreational cannabis responsible use cannabis because, like, it's up to you. You're not supposed to drive when you're all, like, Ooh. I guess high. But right. it's already illegal, so you can't blame the cannabis on it. And it's just, you. it's up to the people if they're responsible. If and you're impaired, I think it's you should just not... a common sense thing. Yes, it is. If you're impaired, yeah. you shouldn't get behind the wheel. And it's my experience as an adult who uses responsibly, that if I'm impaired, I don't want to drive. Yeah. I'll get takeout. So you know, I'll get delivery. You know, it's not that big a deal. And and this is not yeah. that unusual. And this it doesn't is, last that long. This is what it says on the bottle of, uh, of Vicodin or any of the opiates. Yeah. It, says, it says, you know, before you drive a vehicle, make sure how, you know how it affects you. Responsible <laughs> use. Responsible <laughs> use. Hello. It's, yeah. And the same thing with the, uh, you know, uh, yeah, people, look, people... We don't have pills right now. We don't, and we're starting to get capsules and things like that. But those right. are, they're not relative, you know, prevalently available. And they're expensive and they're they cost a lot expensive, of money right? and insurance doesn't pay for it and all these things. So you still, you know, making edibles in your house for medicine or, or buying edibles because it's easier to consume or they're cheaper and you can get the dosage. So, you know, we need these different forms for people to get this medicine in. And it's all about being a responsible user. Consumer, I like that. Responsible consumption, uh, not recreational, responsible use, uh, responsible parenting. Uh, if you are using it uh, in that form, making sure that you're not, you're, you know, we, we used to lock up the liquor <laughs> from the kids. That's what my dad did. Yeah. My dad would lock up, locked up the liquor. You kept it away from the kids. So, you know, lock up your, lock up your cannabis if you're not using it medically with the kids. Just you know? like you should lock up other things that are dangerous. That's right. To children who may not know how to use them or people who may not know how to use them. Like and weapons. again, that's just down the common sense and being irresponsible. Like, right. Oh. <laughs> Which, yeah. which we're supposed to be, uh, we are as Americans and what certainly they give us the, the benefit of the doubt, uh, you know, in, in some of the parties and, uh, in the, poli the politicos, they st certainly claim that it's all up to us. We're responsible for our lives. So if that's the case, let us be responsible. Let us take care of our kids. Inform people, sure, but don't misinform people. I mean, that's, you know, part of the problem is that, uh, the prohibitionists are, have given up. Uh, they know it's coming, so they're trying different angles to come at it, to warn people, to terrify them, as they do so well in the media. It's all about fear. Uh, when there's the, you know, when the kind of, th this fear is nonsensical. Talk about Bloomberg saying it's nonsensical to legalize cannabis. What's nonsensical is not legalizing cannabis. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 
Um, and can I tell you like a good rule yes, to live by? Absolutely. Yeah. Don't be an idiot. Like yeah. <laughs> it's not hard. Just common sense. What do you need? Don't worry. Don't be dumb. It's like speak and speak speak with speaking of idiots, what did we uh, um the the kid? The toddler in the car? Oh just, why did they arrest they they had the they, the, there was a car that was stolen in LA oh, that's and there what was, it was a toddler in the car. It was a car theft. Somebody stole an SUV. Yeah. With the kid in the car and everybody's like, Oh my god, that's terrible. Oh no, the kid, the poor kid. But the, the kid why was the kid in the car? The, sh- the mom was only in the shoe store for fifteen minutes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I don't leave the dog in the car. That person Are you nuts? <laughs> Yeah, so you know, so you got that. You have the the, the, the And that person was not using cannabis. That's let's right. Let's just be clear. Let, that was just a stupid person. <laughs> I idiot. think Michael Moore's right. Every American should get two joints in the mail on Friday. I'm behind that policy. I Every really person living in the U.S. They don't have to be American. How about that? <laughs> oh better. my goodness! Liberty. Wow! Look at the look at the time. It's been an hour, Alexis. Uh, at least for the oh, show, not, not with you specifically. But let's uh, any more. Qu- there, I've seen the chat go. The through. chat is just crazy. Uh, it's lots going of, and going. Lots of kudos and accolades. For Everyone what you're doing. is on board with Liberty and bringing cannabis into the to, into the tomato space yes <laughs> so that it's regulated like tomatoes so we are all on board together my last question to you is alexis when are you going to start your own youtube channel that we can all subscribe to because <laughs> you listen you've got the lighting down you got the lighting and, down. The, and the audio <laughs> plus so. you can do stuff around the farm you should follow grow sisters do you follow grow sisters because It'd be rad for you to have a channel and do some more videos and show us more of the stuff that you're doing. I think people would really like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we certainly, you know, we we you know, we were in talking to your dad before the show, and you know, we agree that these stories need to be told right the right way. The information needs to go out there. Uh, we try to do that every week. That's one of the things we try to do. We try to debunk and uh, and comment a lot on what how the mainstream media is handling uh, the cannabis issue across the country. We try to educate and bring good information about. The medicine, we're not doctors, we're not lawyers, uh, but this is a bottom-up movement in mm-hmm. every respect um, with regards to uh, social justice and, uh, and medicine and all areas of this, of this cannabis and trying to protect the patient from, from, from corporate cannabis. From the government. From, and from the government. <laughs> what is it? Someone said that the, the most dangerous thing about cannabis is being caught by the government using it. Right. That's the most dangerous thing about That's it. That's right, Alexis. It's true. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, if we control the conversation, like you said, be an entrepreneur. Don't go get a job. Be an entrepreneur. So right. create the conversation. Yeah. Make the stories yourself. Create a story Just, and, you know, stringer it out there. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, definitely wanna, I want to push. You want negative liberty. I don't. I don't know if anyone got confused or anything. Yeah, talk. But- you know what? Clar- clar- clarify that a little bit. What is what is the difference? The, the minefield example was was good, but uh, negative and positive liberty. Positive versus it's sort of like uh, uh, um, in uh, you're talking about like positive, a positive they're giving feedback, you permission. positive feedback loops and things. Go ahead. No, so positive is basically where I guess the government has. Okay, this is a much better way to put it. So positive liberty is, so you know, back then when like the, some people had to think that our liberty came from just one guy, the king, right? That's kind of what positive liberty is. And they right. think that he controls everything and they just pretty much have to follow everything he says and practically worship him. But negative liberty is basically where it comes from the creator and you should be able to live your life to the fullest and the best, of course, without hurting your neighbor or anyone around you and without the government getting in the way and just, yeah, that's basically it. Just you getting out of the way, government. not, not being there, removing your, yeah, remo- yeah. the government and receiving, removing itself from the equation. Right. So positive mm-hmm. liberty is like when the government grants you liberty and negative liberty is you assert your liberty and pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, some would say, it. some would say that we, it, it, you know, at the beginning of those documents mm-hmm. here in America said that, uh, the liberty does not come from man, it comes from somewhere else. Oh. So, uh, you know, they it's sort of dropped, source, they man. dropped the ball after they said it. <laughs> we'll <laughs> like, see. yeah, it comes from the creator, but we're going to tell you what to do about it. We're going to tell you how he wants it, you know, which is, uh, which is weird, but that's great. Great. Perfect explanation. Um, 
about uh, the difference between positive and negative liberty. It's mm-hmm. uh, you, you can't give it to us. It is ours and we assert it. We yeah. assert it. So that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, wow. So what's, what's next for you? Where are you on the farm? Uh, you guys have, you, uh, and you know, I have a question. Here's my question. We know you had a birthday party recently. You've been playing yeah. volleyball. Are you having an opportunity to, cause I know this was it's something you you talked about a little bit is being able to be a kid. And I know people are going to be like, does he ever get a chance to just be a kid? Do you get a chance to just be a kid? I know it's tough uh, with the federal yeah. government. <laughs> well, with the life and death on this too. And that too. Yeah. Um, I love art. I love volleyball. I love a lot of things. I guess Math. a lot of girls my age would like. Um, I am unique. Um, compared to most of my classmates, um, obviously, and I, I'm as I'm definitely way more normal than I was in Texas. Um, in Texas, I would always come to school whether it's an hour or so late because I woke up and had maybe an aura or something. Yeah. And here, I'm just I'm a lot better. Awesome. Do you have? Are you able to have fun? Do you have fun? I have fun. I love Colorado. Yeah. There's a lot of snow. Um, love throwing snow at my sister. That's fun. <laughs> um, and of course, I've gotten sadly a couple death threats before. I guess. Oh yeah. Um, Just one part of, of them was actually a couple YouTube of them. Channel. They were actually at school. They and wow. they got into the school. Um, what? Yeah. Wow, dude. But Luckily, I have my amazing lawyers, security team, and everything. They just figure wow. it out. They're always there. So that's that's thank amazing. You to them. Wow, Alexis. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Listen, it's you're in the, something you can't focus the on it, though. I mean, but that just drives me. That's crazy. Well, I mean, that's I. I didn't want to. I didn't want to even engage in that thought. That's no. nuts. That's crazy that someone yeah. would give you death threats for what you're doing. That's that's not, wow. Ah. Um, let's say, oh, question. We have a check question just popped up. Yes. Uh, Blaster Master, one of our regulars. Welcome, Blaster Master. Uh, I'd like to hear Alexa's opinion on healthcare in general, because judging from her testimony, she sounds like she would be in favor of universal healthcare. Ah, uh, yes. What, how do you feel? Do you, uh, are you, a, are you a Medicare for all person, universal healthcare, Obamacare? What's your uh, thoughts on general healthcare? Well, I think that healthcare, it's, if you're all dying or something, then you should definitely be able to go to the ER and get that all figured out. But I don't think the government would be able to come to a doctor. Let's say he's the doctor's millions of dollars in debt. I don't think the government should come up to him with a gun and point it at his head and say, treat this patient for free or else. So I just think definitely um, you should be able to go to the ER or ambulance or anything if you want. But I just think that it just shouldn't affect other people too much. And sure, I'm just, everyone should, yeah, have access to health care, but not in the way that I explained about the government and getting in the way of doctors and everything. Well, I don't, I think that, um, I think that a doctor being made to treat somebody for free is a little bit of a misnomer because the doctor would be paid the same way other Medicare doctors are paid. They just get paid through the government instead of the insurance company. Yeah, the the real answer is like volunteerism and public clinics and everything like that. Just volunteer, help other people like I do with patches. Yeah. Whether it's medical, anything. Uh, Well, you know, and I'd I'd say that that, that, that's, and first of all, you need to be responsible for your own health. Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. Your own, uh, you know, your choices, your choices you make. Don't go skateboard off a cliff and say, Ow, my arm hurts. Like, right, right. Comic sense again. Rule number one: don't sure. be an idiot. Don't be an sure. idiot. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> Start with that. Start well. That's, that's not a good. A, not a bad philosophy. Don't actually. be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. I, I know. Alexis <laughs> Portel says, "Don't be an idiot." Don't be an in idiot. Anything. That's a good one. <laughs> There's guys that skateboard down our hill, which is like, oh, oh my those God. are idiots. Anyway, God bless them. <laughs> yeah, God bless them. God bless them. But you know, connected um, to the vortex. Cool. <laughs> well, I really, really enjoyed our chat today. Oh, this has been great. This has been great. Um, we Is are... there anything you wanted to bring up that we haven't talked about before we go? Yeah. Uh, just nothing really aside from if there's a bill that's, I guess, in all our favor with cannabis, 
don't be afraid to go testify even if you're nervous like I personally I got pretty nervous before it but once you're into it you're just like government wake up and just stop saying you got to do research for a couple hundred years Uh uh-huh got that time nobody's got time nobody's Nobody's got that nobody's got that kind of time that's for darn sure no uh patience without time that's uh that's 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 one of our group one of the groups right yeah uh no we don't we don't have time we don't have time for your more research because it's there you're just not looking in the right places and uh but uh that's i think you're right on point on so many areas we really really uh, are so impressed by your efforts we have loved being following you since we started doing this show uh, following the federal cannabis lawsuit and your your entrepreneurship and and all of your activism and the awards that you won, you really are a great example for everyone that's fighting for patients' rights and liberty and medical cannabis freedom uh, across the country. Uh, and we hope you'll come back. Yeah. Uh, now that we we know we can do it, you're so you're Akamai on the. Uh, on the, the the webcam and the lighting, oh, I'm I'm jealous about your lighting. Yeah, we great. need some lighting. We got to fix our we lighting now. Lighting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you are you are certainly welcome back to the show anytime. We're gonna start having some other, hopefully having some other folks on, like Brando. Brando's on been been on before. Uh, we're gonna get him in here too. But we'll have you back on when uh, when the when we get more information from the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, maybe. Yeah, that'd be we'll, awesome. We'll maybe we'll get yeah, maybe course. we'll get you and. You and Sebastian on, we'll get a, a panel on and we'll talk about, we can talk about the, uh, the case, but, mm-hmm. uh, we, we really thank you so much totally. uh, for coming on. It's really made our super day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is super to have you. It is super. <laughs> this is, we, uh, we, we really, you are really one of our heroes and we don't mean to embarrass you. Uh, yeah. but we do, we really, we think you're doing the, the work that, uh, uh, everyone should be doing around this, uh, this medicine and this plant. And uh, we thank you for being a part of our show and being a part of our reefer revolution every Sunday in the chat. And thank you so much and so much for joining us. So uh, final words, Alexis, this today on uh, reefer revolution live. Say again. Oh, uh, last, last comments, Alexis, anything, anything else to say? Oh, Oh, um, just Come show your support. Um, don't get drowned by the bad stigma. Always stand up. What you think's right. Um, be strong. OneLoverOrganics.com. Uh, <laughs> come it. show and your support. That, nice. That would really help Patches of Hope and other people as well. And I just, and if you want me to come on your show again, just set it up and Sweet. we can make it work. Very awesome. exciting. Very exciting. Thanks so much. One Love Organics, Patches of Hope. Yep. Uh, Alexis Bortel, everybody. Federal Thank you so Thank you. much, Alexis. We'll see you again uh, very soon. Yep. Very soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Stay Thank tuned you. for the afterburn. Stay tuned, everybody, guys. We're going to go into the, uh, take a little break here. You do not have to leave the chat. Right. Stay in the chat. The stream may go off, but cool. you don't have to leave the chat. We're just going to shut it down Everybody's for a minute. Everybody's super stoked that we so had we Alexis. Up. So thank you so much. Yeah, this was great. Thank this you. was great. Thank you so much, Alexis. Thanks, everybody. We will see you in a minute. We'll be right back with the afterburn.